three, we're going to start off by creating a player class and a mob class. Using classes is going to help us make our code simpler and cleaner. A class is like a blueprint. It's something that's going to help us create things like mobs quickly and easily without having to redo a lot of work. Each new class is going to start with a name. So the best practice is for the name to be capitalized. It's going to look sort of like a function. Let's put it right here at the top. I'll add a couple spaces in and we'll start with class and we'll name our class mob. Next we'll add a special method called init. It's def underscore underscore two underscores and then in it followed by two more underscores next to each other and then in parentheses we're going to write self and finally a colon at the end self is just a placeholder later when we run the class it will get replaced by whatever the name of that instance is you'll see that in a minute the first one we'll call mob one for what it's worth but we haven't even gotten there yet. Just like every other function in Python, we're going to space two spaces over from the D and def. This function is going to have variables in it that are going to be important to our mobs, like health, location, loot, and race. Each variable is going to start with the word self, then a period, then whatever we name the variable. So it'll be self.hp, for example. It's random.rand int int, and it's going to be 20, 50. If you want to make it harder, you can make that number a higher number. If you want to make it always the same number, you can just make it a number and not equal a random number. So for example, you could set self.hp to be 50 or 30, 25 or whatever you want. Our next one's going to be self.location and that's going to be set to be the result of a function that we haven't actually created yet called find open space. We'll define that function later. Next, I'm going to draw my mob on the map as an anthersand, an end sign. And finally, let's give our mob some loot, self.loot. We'll randomly select that loot from a special container called a dictionary that we also haven't created yet. It's going to be random.choice, parenthesis list, parenthesis items, underscore dict. That's what I'm going to name the dictionary that's going to hold on to all of this loot. So I'll explain later why we chose a dictionary instead of just a simple list for our loot. It'll make a lot more sense when we create the dictionary in a couple of minutes. Finally, we'll give our mob a race, like, I don't know, whatever you want, really. Ogre, elf, uh, whatever. We'll make it random. We'll, we'll make a new list in a minute, and we'll set this to be a random choice from the list so they can be whatever they want. Okay, that's good for now. Let's create our player class as well. This is gonna be the same deal, class, player. I don't think I said it the first time. It's considered best practice to capitalize the name of the class. So capital M for mob, capital P for player. This one's gonna be the same thing, def underscore underscore I N I T underscore underscore parenthesis and then self again and then a colon. We're also gonna give our player hit points here and we're gonna hard code the location to be 81 just like before. I'm just going to make my player hit points 150. I think that's what it was originally. Now, originally it was a random number right here. We could do that as well. It doesn't matter. I'm going to delete this because this is going to replace it. Great. Now we have a mob class and a player class. And the reason why making a player class is going to be so useful for us is we're not going to have to send values to functions when we call them. Like, for example, here in picture, I called picture parenthesis location. And this gets really tedious. I was looking at some of the other things that we had been doing before, like unpacking all this information. And it just gets to be a little bit much when you're kind of going all over the place, fighting mobs and doing all these things. So by creating a class, we're going to be able to pass this information much more effectively and easily from function to function. Because we changed the player class, we have to change the variable here, player underscore HP, to be player period HP. It's a minor change, but that's because we started with this self.hp, and I'm going to call my new player player, and so this isn't going to work anymore. On Replit, it's really easy to change that. We can highlight the thing we want to change, in this case, player underscore hp, and then I'm going to type control f, and it will autofill it. If I hit this little arrow here, it asks me what I want to change it to, and I'm going to type player period hp. And then I'm going to choose replace all. And now everywhere that it used to say player HP, it now says player period HP. So we can do that now with location as well. Everywhere it used to say location, I wanted to say player location. Because I did 
replace all it has the unintended consequence of changing it here and here on line six and seven on mine i just need to change these back this shouldn't say self period player period location it should just be self period location let's create our player now from the player class the player class is really a constructor its job is to create our player when we call it and we're going to do it by typing player which happens to be the name I decided to make our player named. It kind of made sense to me. And we're going to set that equal to capital P player, parenthesis, parenthesis. It's capital P player because class player is capital P as well. So this is kind of the variable name for the player that we just created. And everywhere it says player period HP is referring to this instance of the player that I created in the player class. Later on when we create mobs, we'll do something like mob1 equals capital M mob parenthesis parenthesis. But we haven't gotten there yet. We'll worry about that in a few minutes. We don't need this anymore because it's right here on line 14 now, so I'm going to delete that. We're going to scroll down because we don't need this either. Part of the beauty of having player.location as a variable is we don't have to pass them to things anymore. We don't have to pass them the functions like this anymore. It'll just know what we're talking about. And that's going to help keep track of things much, much easier. All right, let's give this a try and see if we can run this. Oh, whoops, I forgot the delete player here. Let's try that one more time. Oh man, I'm really making mistakes all over the place. All right, on line 82, I forgot to delete the call player location. That should really be it. Great. Now we can walk our player through the maze and you see we have hit points and our hit points should change and they do. So we're back to where we were supposed to start. Okay, I'm gonna go above the door function. So here I am between the luck function and the door function all the way to the left in line with the D and the other functions. The player has a key right now from part two, but they can't see it and they really have no way to interact with it besides walking up to a door. So we're going to add a function that's going to let the player look at items that they're carrying, like a key. And we'll give them the option to use it, drop it, or whatever. We're also going to create a bunch of other items that go along with this, like potions, and maybe we'll add weapons in later, food items, whatever we want practically. Things that'll make the game interesting for us. I'm going to name this function carrying. Back to the left hand side, DEF carrying, parenthesis, parenthesis, colon, press enter. And the very first thing I want to do is look at the items carried list that we created earlier. And I'm going to check to see if there's anything in it. Because if there's nothing in it, we're just going to stop right there. No point in talking about what the person's carrying if there's nothing there. So if items carried equals equals square brace with nothing in it, and then a colon. And remember, that's the name of the items carried list that we made earlier. So if there's nothing there, we're just going to give a message backslash over the enter key. And I'll just say, looking at yourself, you see that you're not carrying anything. That line gets carried out. That'll go all the way to the bottom where we'll return message. In fact, I'll do that right now just so we don't get confused. But most of the time, something else is going to happen. So we'll put else here, else colon, enter. And now we're going to just print something really similar. So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to change it to looking at yourself. You see that you're carrying the following. Now what I want to do is look at all the items that are in that items carried list. And I want to list those items nice and neat with a number so that I can refer to each one in turn. Our list right now only has a key in it, but when people play it, there could be any number of items and they can be in any order. There could be duplicates, whatever. So we're just going to print out whatever's there and put a number next to it. And that way we can interact with it. Python has this really cool built-in function called enumerate that will go through a list and put a number with each item in the list. We can print out that number and then we can refer to each item by number, which is really handy. And I think it looks really neat. We're going to do that by typing for index comma item in enumerate and then parentheses items carried comma one. Another parenthesis and a colon. What that's going to do is index is going to be the number 
that enumerate is going to create. Item is going to be each item in the list, items carried. And the comma one at the end there is going to start the list at one rather than starting it at zero like lists normally do. So in other words, if we look up at this list up here, items carried key, there's only one thing in the list. In fact, let's just take this over to the left and I'll, I'll give you an example of this. So if I paste this over here, and then I come down here, I think this will work. Then I'll hit enter, and now I give me the three dot dot. That's just going to tell me that I need to space over. And now I'm just gonna print the items there. So you can see there's one key, that's all there is. So I'll press enter, space two over, print, parenthesis, index, comma, item. So that's going to make our nice printed list. Then I'll hit enter, space back, so I'm in line with the F and 4, and I'll print out my message. Type the number of the item you want to use, or D to drop the item, press enter to do nothing. Now I'll get their input. Create my local variable, choose equals input. And then I don't have to write anything because I already know what's going on. You don't have to do this step. I'm just showing you as an example. But if I type print parenthesis items underscore carried one, I get an error because there's nothing in that spot. But if I come over and I make it a zero, I get key because key is in the zero location. The challenge here is that I need to take what they typed. It might be a D or an enter or a number that doesn't correspond to something on the list. And I need to deal with it in a way that's clean and neat and doesn't break the program. I could do it with a big long list of if, elif, and all that, but I'm really trying to avoid that. I want to make this simpler and neater. So I'm going to use a try accept block. The try accept block will try to run a piece of code, and if it doesn't work, if there's an error, rather than break the whole program, it just jumps down to the accept part. So it never runs what's under try if it throws an error, it just jumps to accept. And that's perfect, that's exactly what I want. It's not gonna break the program and it's gonna work nice and neat. So try, colon, and I'm gonna press enter. And now I'm gonna put a bunch of stuff that's gonna to have to do with if they type the number that makes sense. The first thing I wanna do is change choose to an integer, because right now it's a string. So I'm gonna say choose equals int and then parenthesis choose. Now choose is a number and I can do math with it. Now I'll subtract one from choose, And now I can refer to the item that I want to choose in my items carried list like this. Call it item. And set that equal to items carried in position choose. This next bit is going to refer to the items in the list. In order to get to those items, we could have a long list of if, elif. In other words, if the item is a key, then we'll do whatever. And if elif it's a potion, uh, we'll do this. And if elif it's another potion, we'll do that. That ends up being really long and difficult to read. So instead of doing that, we're going to create a dictionary and put these items in a dictionary. By putting them in a dictionary, it's going to make it much, much smaller, make our code more readable, and give you less typing, which everybody loves. Let's go down and create that dictionary right now. I'm gonna just leave that spot, scroll down, give myself a little bit of white space, and we're gonna create this dictionary on the fly. So I'm gonna call my dictionary items dictionary, set it equal to curly brace, that's by the uh, square braces like if it was a list, but this isn't a list, this is a dictionary. And a dictionary in Python is like a dictionary in regular life. You have a word and you have the definition, key and value in Python. So the key is one side of it and the value is the other. So in other words, let's make one of our keys a potion. So we'll just start right there. So I'll say bottle of red potion. Now I'm gonna make a colon, not a semicolon, dot, dot, one over top of each other, over by the L key. And now I'm gonna to refer to a function that we also haven't created yet. I'm gonna call that function red potion. Now I'm gonna put a comma and just to speed the process up, I'm gonna copy this line and now I'm gonna press enter and I'm gonna paste the next line in. And this next potion, instead of being red, I'm gonna make a green one. Press enter again, I'll make a clear one. Don't forget about our key. I'll call that function key, makes sense. Why don't we give ourselves a food item? I'll call that food. So these are all the possibilities right now. We could always add to them. Whatever you want, whatever your imagination can come up with will probably work great. And now we're going to use a special 
Python function called get, and it works with dictionaries, and it's gonna get the thing that we're referring to, which is great, perfect, that's just what we want. I'm gonna create a variable called get item, and it's gonna be equal to parenthesis items dictionary dot get parenthesis item. Finally, when I call this carrying function way down here, Remember I was setting message to equal whatever this returns? So I need to return a message. And this is going to go to another function that's actually gonna return a message. So I'm actually going to set message equal to whatever that returns, as though this was its own function. Perfect, now all we have to do is define these items and this part will run. But let's finish the accept part of our try accept block. So I'm gonna go down a little bit and back. Now I'm in line with the T and try, and I'm gonna write accept. And this part will be if they chose to drop their item. So now we're back for this variable choose if they typed D. Now the players chose D and we're gonna do what we already did before. We're gonna print this whole thing out once again. I'm gonna go up here and copy it and make sure that this is in the right place. So now we printed it out again. And now I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna copy this line as well. And it's gonna be in line with the F and four. This time I'm gonna modify this to be just the item you wanna drop. That'll do. Could've copied this line too. Nice. Now I wanna interact with another numerated list and that means I have to do another try accept block. I promise, we're almost done with them. So I'm gonna press enter again and type try again and we can go back and copy these lines. Notice I'm spaced over from the T in try. I'm gonna put this over, because they got messed up. And this time, if they chose an item, we're just gonna drop it. We're just gonna remove that item from the list. We're gonna use the Python function remove. It's just gonna be items carry dot remove item. Now let's give them a nice neat message saying that they've dropped that thing. We'll use an F string for this, so it's gonna be outside of the quotes, F, and then the quotes, and then we'll type our message. You have dropped curly brace item. And then another curly brace, and then outside of that, a period, and then finally a quote. Now it's giving me too many quotes here. I have a quote over here and a quote over here. I gotta delete one of these. All right, that should be nice and neat. Now we can get out of the try accept block. The only time somebody's gonna type something that's gonna get caught by this accept block is either if they typed enter the second time or maybe they typed a number that doesn't fit on the list. Since I don't know what it is, I'm just gonna not deal with it and give them no message, but I still have to put something there, otherwise this isn't gonna get returned. I also have to deal with this right here um, if they didn't choose D, so they've hit enter before, right? That's one more message, and I'm gonna go in line with this if, I'm give myself another line and type else. And we can say whatever we want here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe better just keep that stuff. Okay, so now we just have to create a function for each one of these items, and we'll be ready to try this out and see if it works. Fingers crossed. I'm going to highlight red potion. I'm going to go way over here and give myself a little bit more space. And we're going to do this just like everything else. It's going to be all the way to the left, DEF, red potion, parenthesis, parenthesis, colon, now this use case, they're going to use the potion. So we're gonna give them a message. We're gonna take the potion away and we're gonna return the message back to where it was called, which was way up here somewhere. Where was it? There it is, message equals get item. So our red potion is gonna be a positive health effect. So I'll say, you drink the red potion, it tastes sweet, you feel great, cool. And we'll change their health to reflect that. Now we need to remove that potion because we don't want them to be able to use it again and again. So we're gonna go up here and copy that, and paste it down here, but we have to change where it says item to reflect what the item is. So in this case, it's a bottle of red potion. And finally, return message. All right, I'm gonna copy all this because we're gonna reuse this for the next two potions. So now we'll do one for green. <laughs> Obviously my... Uh, <laughs> I could be better here with all this, but anyway. And now I'm gonna subtract health from them. I don't wanna subtract 20 though, that seems like a lot. Maybe I'll make it, I don't know. Yeah, whatever, I'll make it 20. 
I'm gonna return the message. This time it'll be clear. Oops. You know what, this time I'm gonna add a little bit more interest to this. Clear potion could go either way. Let's do that. So I'm gonna say if luck, parenthesis, parenthesis, colon, there's a one in three chance that you'll be lucky and you'll get this. So I'm gonna make that be the lucky one and we'll add 20 to their health. And then they're not lucky, oops, they're not lucky, which is the more likely option, we'll subtract from their health. So let's do this as a random number. I'll subtract random dot rand int, uh, make it five comma 10. Either way, we'll remove the potion Oops, clear potion from their inventory and we'll return a message. All right, and finally we have to do the carrot and the key. We'll do them real quick. Not much to say about a key. We'll use it to open doors. I'm not gonna take the key away because they used it or because they looked at it. We'll take it away when they use it for doors. I copy this for the uh, food one though. I'm gonna make food be a, a small positive and I don't know. All right, fingers crossed this work. Wah, wah. Okay, I think the problem that I had here is that these things need to be above all the rest of the stuff. They need to exist before you can call them in any way. So I'm gonna highlight them all and cut them. So now they're gone, and I'm gonna come up above our carrying function and paste them up there. And we'll try that and see if that works. Okay, cool. Now let's take a look and see if we're carrying things. So I'll type C. Oh no. I'm not carrying anything. That's weird. Oh wait, we are only carrying a key. Never mind. I was expecting to see all that other stuff in there. Let's put that other stuff in there and we'll see if that shows up. So I'm gonna copy all this stuff because I don't feel like typing it all real fast. And I'm gonna come up here and just paste it all in there real quick. So I want to get rid of most of this stuff. I called all these or no. Oh. Oops. Let's change that. So it's gonna be each item. Get rid of the colon and the uh, function name. Better fix these two real quick. Scroll down here and fix them too. That's annoying. Did you type it wrong? <laughs> Everything's wrong. Well, they're gonna be wrong in the function names too. Not in the function names because they're not in there, but in this part. Okay, let's try that again. Yay, there's everything. Let's see if it works. Uh, we'll have some red potion, please. Uh-oh, that didn't work. I'm really failing here often. Oh, guys, see what I did wrong? This is supposed to be a square brace here. All right, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, that's probably wrong down here now too. I'm wrong here and there. Square brace for line 105 on mine and 118. All right, uh, let's try running that again. Fingers crossed. Yay, we drink the red potion. We feel great. Keys open doors. I spelled open wrong too. Wow. <laughs> I'm struggling. All right, let's fix that. I think we got it now. Awesome, so now we have the ability to look in our inventory, we can carry stuff, we can move stuff, we can do all kinds of things like that. I wanna show you really quickly one last thing. I uh, thought of a different way to do this. Uh, you may like this, it draws your map along with you as you go up. So if you look at the, uh, at the map here, you know, it works like this. There's another way to draw this and I just thought I'd take a minute and show you. If you don't care to change it, you can stop here, it's not gonna break anything. You can also make some kind of question where you can ask if they wanna see their maze history or not. But I'm gonna just walk you through this really, really quickly. Rather than make all this history and save all this stuff, we're just gonna print out the maze around the player and that'll save a lot of coding effort, but it also kind of makes the maze a little bit more mysterious. So you might want to make a second copy of your code if you're worried about losing things. I'm gonna delete all these lines here. They're gone and I'm gonna delete this as well. And I'm gonna replace this with print parentheses. And now I'm going to take that, put a comma, maze, player maze location 11, cut this, 10, another comma, cut this. I'm gonna get rid of that. And then a new print line. That'll be the three sections above the player. These will be the players left and right. I hope you don't mind me doing all this copying and pasting. And now finally, we're gonna kind of reverse this whole thing. Another print. 
and we'll do plus 9, plus 10, and plus 11. And let me just double check that I didn't make a mistake somewhere, like right here. Put that parenthesis in, put this other parenthesis in, get rid of this. So it lo should look nice and neat. So it's print maze location minus 11, minus 10, minus 9, and then minus 1 to the left of the player, minus plus 1 to the right of the player, plus 9, 10, and 11. Let's see what that looks like. Now you can only see some of the map. And I thought that would be good for when we add mobs in later because you won't be able to see the mobs kind of walking all around everywhere. You're not going to have like amazing sight to see beyond where you should be able to see. You're only going to be able to see what's right in front of you. So mobs are coming next. That'll be the next video. We'll create mobs from our mob class and we'll make a function to move them all around and allow us to fight them and get drops from them and other fun stuff. So that'll be coming up soon.